Everybody knows Brooke is the snack queen. I love snacks. You do love snacks. I like snacks too. You really love snacks. Well, there's certain snacks that I just like to have on hand and with backup. <laughs> like in the, in the, <laughs> An have extra it bag. Like really easy to grab, at least right. two or three bags right there because you move through them so fast, especially if we're, there's a group of us together. And my favorite thing is with Thrive Market, they have veggie sticks and pork rinds. That's become a new favorite of mine. And I've gone to the market near my house and they, they run out. Yeah. They don't even have them. So it's really convenient that you can order groceries, order snacks for me from Thrive Market. And I don't <laughs> even have me. to, I don't have to like, you know, try and tear through town to go to every grocery store to see if I can find my favorite snack. Cause it's it just, right. it's going to show come up to right my to door. Your door. Thrive Market is an online membership based market on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone. Enjoy guaranteed savings and member only prices. Thrive Market members save an average of $32 on every order. I'm all about saving money. Me too. Especially now. I know I need to save money. <laughs> Go to thrivemarket.com slash reps. Join today and you'll get a free gift of your choosing up to $24 in value. That's T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash reps to start your risk-free membership and get a free gift today. Thrivemarket.com slash reps. We received our shipment of usual wines. And it's gone. And it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, it's all gone. We got the mixed pack. We got the mixed pack. Right? We wanted to try everything they try had. Everything. And I also ordered us the spritz. Yes. Which was incredible. The usual spritz. The sp- usual the spritz. spritz. The, the spritz. Doing the splits. <laughs> What we weren't prepared God is doing for, the splits. I know, what we weren't prepared for is how much we would enjoy it and blow through it <laughs> way too fast. We thought it was going to last us and it definitely didn't. Usual Wines has a red blend, a rosé, and a sparkling white wine called Brut. They also have a limited production of Brut rosé just for the summer and spritz that aren't available all the time. So if you are go hearing out and this, get them now. go and try They're it. delicious. So good. Each bottle is 6.3 ounces, a heavy pour, or about a glass and a half of wine. No more pouring wine. Everybody just gets their own. Yeah, and because of the single serve format and bottle design, Usual is always fresh, no more flat, bubbly, or stale rosé. Go check out their website at www.usualwines.com and use our discount code REPS for $8 off your first order and try your first glass on us. Cheers. (laughs) <laughs> You're annoying. Okay. Oh. Situated. Oh, forgot to. <sighs> All right. Hey guys, welcome to our hundred, hundred episode. Hundred percent episode. Hundred percent. Um, hundred percent. So welcome to the hundred percent. Uh, <laughs> keep talking the same time. Hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> We uh, welcome to Between the Reps with Brooke and Gina. We it's actually fitting that it's we are uh, recording on Labor Day, mm-hmm. and it makes sense because our guest today for our hundred episode was in labor mm-hmm. with Brooke me yeah not on this exact day <laughs> right that would make it even that would be better. weird uh, that yeah would be really weird. Be like if it were Labor Day and it were my birthday and you were here, <sighs> wow, crazy, mind blown. No, yes, this woman pushed me out. She did. Yeah, did a great job. Uh, so my head. Would you is, like to introduce is, uh, her? Shaped pretty nicely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not too fucked up. No, at least one can hope. Because yeah. if I ever have to, you know, shave my head one day, you'll be fine. I'll I would fine. love to see that. I'll be fine. Just like a full Britney Spears. Yeah. Just a full breakdown moment. <laughs> I was talking to Devin about Cool. That. I'm going to take over on all your money and Dude, just keep you in the Devin, house. We meet, it was like a Hail Mary. Like if everything just falls apart, like one more thing we could do just, you know, just for exposure is like go on Instagram and then just do take a poll of if I should shave my head or not. <laughs> That's a terrible idea. And, if, and then just like do it. You know what would be really cool is if they just shaved all of your hair except for what was attached to the extensions. <laughs> just the pieces that were attached to the extensions <laughs> no just like all of your actual hair but mm-hmm. except yeah leave what's attached to the extensions just leave the extensions in 
You'd have like a horseshoe, like a bald. Yeah, give me like a, just like there's an actor really with like kind of hair like that, right? Like bald, like the long. Who? Oh. Ugh. I'm going to tell I'm gonna you. crack this wine open. The character that I'm thinking of, and I don't think he has hair like that. He just has long, he's kind of like a scary white guy, long blonde hair. Why do I, why do I feel like he's the, the villain in Ghost? Oh. You know what I'm talking about? I kind of. He's no. like he's like he's like a villain in a lot of old movies. Yeah, kind I'm of thinking of the character. dude in Die Hard. Maybe that's. I don't know. Anyway, Moving okay, on. we're yeah. So, uh, would you like to introduce? Yeah. Hey guys, this guest? is my mom. Say hi, mom. Hi. This is Leslie <laughs> Entz, and uh, she's here. And we're doing. I think the last time she was on the podcast was an accidental phone call. Yeah, it was. That was and your it debut. Was like, it was like one of our first <laughs> podcasts. Yeah. Yep. I think she's, it's happened a few times. She's so nervous to be sitting here on the podcast right now and we're like, no reason to be nervous. We, uh, we're just talking to each other. That's it. And, and, and I'm doing good and our listening. Listeners. I'll yeah. pop in when I can. <laughs> okay. Hundred. Huh, well, I wanted to episode. say, I did want to say thank you to everybody who wrote in to give yeah. us ideas. Uh, there were a lot of good ones. There were some bad ones. Sorry. Which there was, was ex- just, which was expected. There was just one bad one. Who I was going to find it. You're going to read it? Well, Hold on. I got to put these suckers on. While you're searching, uh huh. do you want me to tell a really funny story? Yeah. Okay. It's also a funny story I haven't told you yet. So oh, good. You're going to okay. want to listen to this. Okay. All right. So the other day, me and my mom were driving. We were over on West Cliff in Santa Cruz. We were taking Maggie to the dog park. Mm-hmm. And we we uh, go to the dog beach. It was disgusting. Bad. Just the kelp was so bad and like all the bugs and the kelp and- there was still like ash all over in the sand. Mm-hmm. So like we let her run for a minute just cause she had spent so much time inside cause the, you know, everything's happening here. Right. And then we're like, well, let's get out of here. So we leave and we're walking back to my car. And as we're kind of pulling up to my car, there's this like, I want to say it was like a BMW uh, car that was like trying to parallel park right it, in front of my it car. It actually wasn't a BMW. What was it? It was a Corolla. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it was. No, it wasn't. Because there's such a mom no. and daughter. It was I, a Honda I, No, it wasn't, mom. I swear to God, <laughs> it was like a very, it was one of those little, it was like one of those teenage boys it that was. has a lot of, lot of money. Okay. It was a nice car. Okay. So this car, I didn't realize who was driving the vehicle until we got a little bit closer, but we watched this car like trying to, uh, attempting to parallel park in front of my car. There was a very big amount of space. There was a lot. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've done this many times where if I'm driving on the right side of the road and the parking spot's on the right side of the road and it seems like a really big spot, I might go in head on, you know? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then what happens is you go head on and you just never can get it right. Nope. You just continue to fuck it up. Yep. Like, it just, you just keep, like, inching, like, Austin Powers mm-hmm. parking and you just can't until you have to start over. So we're watching this and he's, like, back. He's, like, he goes in and he's, like, backing up. And I'm, we're, like, watching it, like, oh, shit, don't hit my car. It was getting close. It was getting really close. And so then he stops, he's pulling forward. And so we're laughing because it's just this car full of like these, like, you know, uh, young kids, young adult, all these boys. Uh huh. I didn't realize it was all boys in the car. I just saw who the couple, uh, the two boys in the front. Anyways, I go to get in my car, I put Maggie in the car. And right before I get in the car, I'm just thinking, ah, I should go and I should go and give him a tip. So I did. No. His window was down. Unsolicited tip. Yep. Yep. <laughs> she did. I walk up. And I'm just going to say I looked pretty cute that day because my mom bought me a hat. Uh, <laughs> walked up to the window and they weren't expecting it. And the window was down and I just leaned out. And I, was, and I, I leaned down and put my hands, you know, I was like, and I go, hey. <laughs> you probably scared the shit out of them. <laughs> I'm like, hey. Um, and they had seen me though, because they're uh-huh. like, you know, probably feeling kind of dumb that they can't quite get it right. right it's and taking I'm literally forever. just standing there trying to get into my car. <laughs> and so I just stopped and he, he looks and I was like, hey, uh, here's some advice. And I was like, and I get it. I was like, no, I, this happens to me all the time. But one thing, nine out of 10 times, every time y- you uh, want to parallel park, I'm like, just always pull up to the car in front and reverse in. in. Every time I said, even though when the space looks like it's big enough for you to pull right in, right. I'm like, this happens to me all the time. <laughs> so I know, I'm like, just, I'm like, I told him, I was like, all right, you're going to pull up even to that car, you're going to back up and turn your, you know, turn your wheel until your front wheel matches this one. And then you're going to start straightening it out. And he's like, okay, you know, or whatever. 
I give this advice and I'm like, he's like, I shut up away. old lady. I walk away. <laughs> no, he was cute. I'm and, and I was, you know, I walk away and then we're getting in the car and he does it. So then I knew he wasn't like too, um, embarrassed right or anything or proud then he then he uh, did what i had told him to do mm-hmm. and he like a glove right parks it perfect we were coaching him along so Keep we're coming. so we're driving we pull out and we're passing and um as we start driving <laughs> my mom we just noticed that i had stuff in my teeth <laughs> <laughs> We had had pokey. Oh, that's the we had had, worst. We had had pokey, and I like, my mom was getting something out of her teeth, and I was like, oh, I wonder, I have anything What's in my me? teeth. And I went, and I look oh, in the mirror, God. and I have a green thing. No. Big. On the side of my front no. tooth. And I was like, because right before this, literally right before I go, you know what I just love about that? Like, he's going to remember that moment <laughs> yeah. forever. Ever. And I'm thinking yeah. like, you know, I've, you know, I look, I'm like a cute older, you know, older woman, older girl, you know, older than him and probably embarrassing because I came over and gave him unsolicited advice, which he took and it worked. And then I'm like, and then he's going to remember this girl that came up to his window that had green shit big in her giant teeth. green thing. It, it was, was like, big. It was oh, so that's funny. funny. That's so embarrassing. You I was know, like, man, I can't wait to tell this story to Gina on the podcast. Dude, that, that just happened to me after we had <laughs> pizza the other day and Col- uh, Colby was uh, videoing <laughs> and the whole time. You know, he's, he's asking me questions and stuff and then I'm answering and then I go to drop Daniel off after and he goes, you have a big thing in your tooth. <laughs> this yeah, giant, tell me now. giant black thing in my tooth. I was like, cool. I hope there's like, you know, it's, me <laughs> talking really close up. Is. Don't you know, every time you eat, you kind of take your tongue and I mean, well, yeah, anything like there. I mean, I'm sure you don't have. But yeah. Sometimes it's I mean, that, that yes, that would make sense. <laughs> that would yeah. make sense. Yeah. But you know, sometimes you forget just so deep in that pizza yeah yeah, yeah. that pizza was that good. pizza was delicious right yeah i don't normally eat pizza i know I way i know all of us did we, we all had so to roll pizza. ourselves out of there we were just oozing fat <laughs> <laughs> sweating grease um oh I, I found it okay so this is the bad one and by the way tammy i'm thank you so much for being a, a great listener but she even opens it with i've got an idea for the 100th episode gina i'm sorry you're probably going to hate this oh <laughs> You were right. And I did. Uh, Gina mentioned she's going to do bodybuilding. How about considering a bikini competition? Oh my God. (laughs) Brooke could discuss her figure competition experiences and share some photos of those days. You could also have a prep coach as a guest on Between the Reps (laughs) and discuss the process and give an overview of what it will take. Brooke could also discuss avoiding all the, the common pitfalls. Then you could use footage of the actual process over time in vlogs too. Of you doing a bikini show? Yeah. No. The answer's <laughs> no. That's going to be a no for me, that's boss. Gonna be, yeah. <laughs> that's going to be no for me, dog. Um, anyway, she goes on. I thought that was pretty funny. That is funny. So thank and you, you were thank right. Thank you, Tammy. You were right. She is <laughs> not into it. Gonna hate this. Um, uh, I would have loved it. <laughs> for her to do that? Oh I would have cheered gosh. John. I have to be honest, and I hope I don't offend anybody. I might offend well, somebody. No well, one's no one's if here. If I do, to, I do. No one's here to re- I, respond. I I've had some friends who, as they're getting older, you know, do one of these things. Yeah. And I, there's a part of me that just feels like it's a it's a, a it's like a last attempt to get some kind of attention, attention for your body. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, and and if you guys, if somebody out there does it, good for you. That's great. But I just wouldn't, that's not the kind of attention that I like. Yeah. Yeah. It's not me. But thank and you. That honestly, was- I think I'd be, I don't think I'd be okay with you getting more attention than you already get. <laughs> You're so full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say this. All right. Uh, I work out. So do you. Yeah. You do work out. Also, I enjoy uh being fit feeling sexy and like pretty vain about wanting to stay in shape and how we look right right that's the reality i will also say that uh my uh, personal opinion and assumption but personal opinion on any of the competitions of people that are in like bikini or body bodybuilding whatever yes for some of those like people that do it they're so dedicated 
it's like, uh, it just becomes a way of life. Right. Especially like when you've put so much time into like bodybuilding, mm-hmm. right? Cause that's like, it takes, you have to be, you have to want it. Right. Right. That's a lot more. I well, mean, it's a huge dedication. Yes. I mean, and, I, do, I do respect what they have to go through. And they yeah, do, totally. and they do that because they want it and they, but also I would say, I would assume that one, it always, it always, for me, it feels good to know that I look good. It feels even sure. better. It feels even better though, to just feel good about yourself. Mm-hmm. And you, that could look all kinds of different ways. You know what I mean? But I totally agree with you that um, doing some of those shows because there is no return on it from doing a show. The right. return from training and dieting and working towards something. So maybe that's why you need the competition. For me, I do have to have, I like to have a goal. It's like, I need to be ready by this date. So like doing something like that could work really well for me if I really wanted to get ready for something. A lot of people don't need that because they just want to live that lifestyle and, you know, diet and work hard. But I wouldn't, like if, if I, I care, I would want some attention. So that's definitely like your friends. That's yeah. definitely an attempt to one feel really good about themselves, but also have everyone notice it. Which isn't a bad thing. No, no, no. It's just no. not for me. So I don't think anyone could really be mad about that because it's just yeah. the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts. either hurts or it's <laughs> it's funny because it's true. And also you might be a little embarrassed or upset, but also it's the truth. So you can't get too mad about it. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Truth They're jokes. Odd, if you're, yeah. <laughs> truth jokes. Yeah. I have some friends that talk about truth jokes. What's that? You make truth jokes at friends. It's like Daniel does not like truth jokes. Oh. <laughs> You know, it's like if we poke fun at him because all he does is talk about cameras, right? Right. And he does not like it. Right. Even though it's the truth. It's the truth. <laughs> yes. 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 Truth jokes. Yeah, truth jokes. Can, we make can be we make truth jokes at ourselves. Helpful. That's why yeah. I think we're- It's called self, self-deprecating. Oh, I thought you were tapping me like you were like, hey, I'm here. Let me hey. talk. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm trying to say something. Okay, but I am done talking, so. Um, so I just wanted to give, uh, I just wanted to read a couple other ones just because- People were so nice to write in. Uh, This one was, hi guys, I hope you're both well. I'm loving the episodes and I've watched them for as long as I can remember. To celebrate the 100th episode, you could include all the highlights, best bits from all your previous episodes as there are so many to mention. I can't wait to see what the episode features. Keeping you lots of love, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. Um, We have stated many times that we don't remember anything that we've said. We don't. (laughs) We don't, man. <laughs> so I literally had Devin. We had an episode where we t- I talked about my uh, Devin mm-hmm. being like the greatest. She's so much more than an assistant, but I don't even know what I would call her. She's just, she's Devin. She's your friend. She's Hey Devin. She's Hey Devin. Hey Devin. And um, literally like the day it came out, mm-hmm. she texted me and she said, you know, it was like, you know, thanking me about it. And I go, what did I talk about? <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> And then as she said something else, then I, then I remembered like what it must've been about, but I had no idea. No idea. I know. So we, we would do that, but honestly it would take us having to listen to all of them to. And take notes. Yeah. To uh, even remember what we said. There are some good ones. Yeah. I mean, one in particular was probably, you know, I mean, I think it was funny and also just, it was truth was when I told the story about how my period cup failed at the gym mm-hmm. that was a good one <laughs> so embarrassing such and such a proud moment and funny such a proud yeah. moment moment yeah because i just you know i was working out and i must have just uh clamped down too hard <laughs> <laughs> shoot that sucker right out just really got it twisted up in there <laughs> this right, one was funny too one? i'm not going to read all of them like the whole things. This was from, uh, Tess. I'm not going to read her whole name. Um, uh, she says hundredth episode ideas. The two of you want, wanted to reenact movies. So maybe a little stepbrothers clip, maybe a hundred listeners shout out what, uh, throughout the episode, what you would be doing at age 100 in a nursing home together. What famous person you would tip a hundred dollars, a hundred dollar bill to be, to, uh, to strip teas for you. Which, I mean, those are awesome too. Um, uh, this other one from Catherine was uh, discuss mo- uh, worst wardrobe malfunctions you've had when working out. <laughs> Have you had any? I started thinking. 
I've had like a, a nipple pop out the top. Yeah. Like the, but you like, I have a shirt over it. So you just see like an indent and just like a nipple above it. But I haven't had any, I mean, I don't wear shorts. So. Have I you? mean, I have, I think I told the story of my wardrobe malfunction, sort of. Which one? My white shorts. Mm. When I was in Europe. I did tell that story. Oh, you did. There's poop on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was. I mean, I'm not even ashamed anymore. Shameless. <laughs> That's right. I didn't poop my pants. <laughs> I just sat with the, no, with these shorts, with a lot of workout shorts, I don't wear underwear and I was squatting super heavy. And maybe when I was in Europe, they didn't like have- Like you just had like a turtle head poking? No, I don't even think it, I think it was just a dirty butthole. I think that when I was in the UK, I think when I was in the UK- Did you Let shark? me finish, no. No, I think that like, they didn't have wet wipes. So Ooh. that's why I like wet wipes because you get it clean back there. Toilet paper, you just never know. I know, which you know what my sister told me? What? You're not supposed to flush wet wipes. Oh no. Ever. Yeah. Ever, no. I knew that. Well, I didn't know that. Because they say, the no, ones that are flushable, it's a they lie. say you're supposed to use, you could flush one, but I've definitely heard stories of uh, the buildup of those things. Yeah, no, it's a lie. You're not supposed to flush them at all. That's what my sister told me. I had no idea. You've been flushing them? Well, yeah. I mean, it's the flushable ones. I haven't had they them They say in a flushable. While. I know. It's Maybe a lie. Maybe I just need a bidet then. You can't have a bidet. I <laughs> <laughs> if I told that story. I think you did. See, like I said, can't remember. Um, in case you guys are wondering, she shit in a bidet. I did. <laughs> I just told the story how I had, I got poop from a dirty butthole on white workout shorts and then walked around Warner Brothers Studios. That's embarrassing as shit. <laughs> but Gina does have some embarrassing moments that, that are- um, Too many, too many to mention. Yeah. Yeah, I shit in a bidet. She did. I did. <laughs> I'm proud of you. The, the best was the best was. I can still was, just hear you. <laughs> what did I say? I can still just hear you. You're in the bathroom and you just go, "Oh no!" <laughs> and I was like, "What?" And you're like, "Don't come in here! Don't come in here!" I did. And I was like, "What?" And you're like, "No, don't come in here!" <laughs> Dude, that's yeah. That was humiliating. Just like I could hear you perfectly the moment you realized that the weird urinal style, sort of weird wide. No toilet. Well, seat. I think I had no been, toilet seat. Having <laughs> toilet was actually a bidet. Well, I hadn't been. I had. Well, I hadn't been. You know, I had been drinking, and so I sat down. And I already was like, "Hmm, this feels weird." But I'm in Italy. Yeah, but so. I'm already there. I'm already. Yeah, I'm already going. It's happening. It's happening. <laughs> um, <laughs> Depending on where you live, uh, where you shop, grocery shop, all these things, it can be really difficult, or not maybe not really difficult, but it can be difficult to find products that are going to help you live the healthy lifestyle that maybe you're trying to live. You know, we start trying to take certain things out of our diet because they're not great for you. We try to eat less processed foods. We want stuff that's going to be non-toxic, stuff that's, you know, BPA free, yeah, made paraben in USA. free, all these things. And it can be tough to find products. And that's why we've really loved Thrive Market because that's what they're striving for. And there's lots of different brands and companies you can, you can find on there. And you're guaranteed to find products that are good for you. Well, and you can find anything between, and it's not just food and cleaning products. It's beauty products, supplements, wine. You can get meals. Yeah, and their meals, they have it for people of all different dietary restrictions. Mm -hmm. Vegan, vegetarian. Keto. Yeah, ketogenic. Yeah. So if you guys want to try Thrive Market and get a free gift today, go to thrivemarket.com slash reps. Join today and you'll get a free gift of your choosing up to $24 in value. That's T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash reps to start your risk-free membership and get a free gift today. Thrivemarket.com slash reps. Gina, I know how you get pretty anxious when it's time to work out, eh? I do. Well, guess what? Beachbody is going to take the anxiety out of your training. Well, thank God. You're like, I need some anxiety-free training. <laughs> It's not helping. <laughs> uh, my sister actually is, she just, well, she didn't just have a baby, but she had a baby and she's kind of in that process now of like working out, getting healthy. Well, and, and being at home. Yeah. There's not always time to go to the gym. No. So that's why Beachbody comes in 
very handy. Well, and it's for her, you know, and for many of you, it's not just time, it's money to go to a gym. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of money. Yeah. Um, Robin has been using Beachbody and she loves it. You know, she's getting a lot of, diff- a lot of help. One of Robin's favorite programs that she's found for obvious reasons is the pre and postnatal bar blend. And also there's so many different workout routines to follow and that you can do that makes it exciting. And I love that. I love that she's found something that she's really excited about and it's working for her. Well, and it's great because it's not just for one kind of fitness level. There's workouts for all fitness levels, including bodybuilding, weight training, cardio, hit yoga, and even dance workouts. You know, that's my favorite. It is. Yeah. And workouts can be as short as 10 minutes and that, and they don't require a ton of equipment, which is also nice. Really nice. You can't even buy any right now. <laughs> you can't get it anywhere. You can't get it anywhere. I've sold all of mine to help friends out. <laughs> I know. If you guys are looking for some diversity in your training and something that's just convenient and low cost, just to stay in shape and keep moving in these weird ass times, one program that I would like to challenge you guys to maybe attempting, maybe it's mostly because I want to challenge Gina. <laughs> <laughs> Um, a new <laughs> program they have on Beachbody is the relaxation and meditation. I'm all about that. Relaxation and meditation. Relax, reduce anxiety, and feel good through the power of guided meditation. Quick, easy sessions calm your mind to help you unwind and de-stress, leaving you inspired, focused, and empowered. I'm in. Get a special free trial membership by texting REPS to 303030. You'll get full access to the entire platform, all the workouts, nutrition information, and support absolutely free just text reps to 30 30 30 this one was from ashley uh she has a bunch of nice things to say thank you ashley um it says uh hundred episode you guys should call fans or listeners of the podcast or it would be fun to hear or see some of your family on the podcast brooks mom and dad gina's kids so ashley your wish is our command we have Brooke's mom here. Um, and wouldn't I was telling Brooke, I would not have my kids on this because God knows what they would say. <laughs> I don't know if I would trust what they would say. I'm not sure I would either. <laughs> I yeah, you hung out with them last I night. I hung out with them last night. <laughs> I Honestly, I think they're it's a crazy great bunch. Idea. Great they're, bunch. Yeah, great bunch. No, they're they're amazing. My kids are amazing. I think it's a great idea. But, um, well, we'll see. It would definitely be a party. (laughs) It would definitely be a party. (laughs) You know what we could do? What? Okay. Episode idea. Mm -hmm. We we record just like little snippets Uh of like a two question with each of your kids. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) You know, it's like, and then it's like, we, one comes in, we sit down, we ask them a couple questions, they get up, they leave. Next one. Next. (laughs) Sits down, couple questions. Next. And then, cause we, cause they, we film it and we record it, but then we can just tighten it up. Uh, which kid do you think I'd be the most scared of? Ruby. I mean, Ruby. Oh, see, I, that's not, that's not the first person that comes to mind. Really? Yeah. It's Jordan. Oh, he was my <laughs> next one. But I was also thinking after hanging He's out. He's so unfiltered. He is very yeah. unfiltered. <laughs> yeah. But getting one to leave for the other one to come in might be a problem. I know. They, they all want to comment. They do. They do. Oh, so, you for sure could not get Jordan out of the out of the seat. No, that's, he, that's no, he it. wouldn't. He would need to be the last one. He would. And he'd have tons to say. He loves telling people that I smoked when I was pregnant and that's why he has learning disabilities. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Which is not true. I didn't. Okay, so this is the thing. I found out that I was pregnant later I didn't realize it because I was a teenager and I just didn't know and so when I found out I realized I had been smoking and so when my kids were older they would ask you things like did you ever do drugs did you ever smoke did you ever you know and so Jordan had asked me one time when he was little he said mom did you ever smoke when you were when you were younger and I said and I've always been honest with them I said yeah and you know it was really bad you know I don't want to do it And he said, I don't know why he said this, but he said, did you smoke when you were pregnant with me? And I was like, uh, uh, (laughs) yes. Yes, for like a second. So he loves telling that story and it makes it sound like I was just smoking through my whole pregnancy. I mean, as soon as I found out that I was pregnant, I didn't smoke anymore. But yeah, it was, so yeah, I don't trust him. (laughs) I don't trust what he'll say. The other night, 
so uh, Leslie's been here for how long? Mm. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Five days? Five days. Yeah. It's been awesome. Um, and Brooke and Leslie were over at the house two nights ago, and we were talking about my kids, and I said, I bet if I called called one of them or called Jordan, he would answer. And it was like 1030 at night, and he answers, and all of my kids are over at one kid's house, and they're hammered. Hammered drunk. Hammered. So funny. Hammered. And um, Mom, I can't they all you. start chanting. <laughs> we thought they were chanting, Brooke's mom's bum. Brooke's mom's <laughs> bum. <laughs> I know. <laughs> But they were chanting, Brooke's mom's buff. Brooke's mom's buff. I think we may have, well, one, they were all so hammered drunk that well, they Kylie, may have not got every syllable out. No, but Kylie also was talking about her, her, her swimsuit pictures and how amazing swimsuit she pictures. looked. And then they talked about how um, I'm actually their adopted daddy and that they <laughs> and that they really they, wanted- They were calling grandma, you they their- They really wanted her, their step grandma yeah, to be yeah, Leslie. Yeah. They were calling you their stepdad. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was they're they're funny kids. They showed up to dinner and Kylie goes, I I told them that I knew that I knew that Daddy Brooke would be here today. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's right. Don't you ever forget that's it. That's right. Better go clean your room. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, Apparently, last night we were- I scared Jordan. You oh, did. You did? Yeah. Yeah. Remember when she yelled? No. When you were oh trying my to gosh. get out shoe. Start eating. She, no one I'm, was listening I'm to I'm letting you, you know, oh. that's normal. And she did it. I don't think I, I even like, realized. Dude, she was I'm like. I'm so used to him not listening to You're like, you guys, me. come and eat. And my mom was like, yeah, get up here and get it. Or something like that. <laughs> and I said, get your asses up and eat. She's been cooking all day. Thank you. In the kitchen. Thank for you. For you all. That's yeah, right. But, but the get your asses up and come eat was like. Hope. Oh, okay. I mean, very normal. For like what I grew up with. But like loud. And you had all the boys like looking at her, just like, you're kind of scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> I love I was it. laughing so hard. I'm like, yeah, that's her. There's your grandma. <laughs> that's, that's your step grandma. <laughs> no, uh, it was funny because during Liar's Dice, Jordan kept forgetting Leslie's name and he kept saying, go, go, Brooke Mom's Buff. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Brooke Mom's Buff. Oh, man. Uh, all funny. right. So let's, let's get to, let's get to your mom. Mom, what's your most embarrassing moment? Hmm. My most embarrassing moment. What's something that was very embarrassing? I don't really know. There has to be something. Nothing ever embarrasses you? No. (laughs) You probably could pick something more than me. Actually, I 100% couldn't, Mom. I really... You lived many years before you had me, 30 to be exact. You never had anything really embarrassing happen to you? Well, I don't know if you can call it embarrassing, but my kids, well, Cody especially... In the mic. ...would like to hide from me if I took him anywhere. And it, we were in a store, and it was back when... Um, this is actually really funny. There was a kidnapping of a little boy in... They'd found him, you know, a lot of that was going on. And um, I'd gone into a store with him and he hid from me. He was there and then he wasn't there. And I went into like panic mode. I'm looking all over. And then it's like, they're about ready to call the cops. And I look over and they had those racks of like the oh, clothes, yeah. like clothing. Yeah. Racks. My kids used to do that. And he's hidden in there and his yeah. little head's peeking out. And I'm like, oh, hell. <laughs> You're in so much You're trouble. You're in so much trouble. Get over my kids him. is like, I reach to touch him and he like throws his hands up overhead and drops to the ground. Like everybody stops and looks like I beat the like shit, you beat out, the of shit him. out of like him. Like I just yeah. beat the living shit out of him. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, the whole store, because they've been calling him right. for the intercom is looking for him. <laughs> and then he does that to me and he right. thinks it's, really funny i mean i'm the youngest of four horrible and we were still hiding in clothing racks when i was oh that was the most fun yeah but then by the time i was growing up what she would say was i'm leaving you guys (laughs) she didn't even know where we were and she was like bye stay here and we're all in there like as long as we can we're like wait hold on is mom mom leaving (laughs) i'm out of here i don't give a shit Uh, no that is kids kids can be very embarrassing for sure i probably yeah or like when uh 
Cody would, was screaming in the grocery store? Okay, that was. He was still in the shopping cart. And How old? Um, My brother's the oldest, by the way. He was I'm the maybe, youngest of four. Maybe three. Okay. Three or four. And I was down the street from my parents' house. And of course, my dad, great man. Um, would, my son would hang out with him. He was the first grandson. And he'd go every with him. And my dad would call. This is awful. Like well, it's just bologna or... Bologna and cheese. Was, was called horse cock and clogged butt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, like clog, clog, like clog butt? butt. Clog butt. Because cheese butt. would plug clog you up. Your butt. Okay. Okay, so... So my grandpa would call... Bologna and cheese sandwiches, horse cock and clog butt. <laughs> okay, so it's your horse cock. <laughs> so here we go. Sounds are. delicious. Okay, now I'm in a grocery store. I have him in the shopping cart. My cart's loaded and I happen to bypass the meat and cheese area. And he starts hollering, Mom, get that horse cock and clog butt. <laughs> and I'm like, People are stopping. <laughs> and, and he would not stop. He just kept yelling it that I. Finally, went up to the front, and I said, I will be right back to get these groceries. And I got him out of the cart, and I drove him up the street, which was two blocks away, and my dad was there, and I said, here you go. Yeah. He's yours now. He's yours now. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, my God. I want the horse cock and clock And he was screaming the whole way out of the store. Oh, Ruby used to do that. Horse cock and clog. <laughs> Can imagine that screaming is one thing, but yelling horse cock and clog butt is a total another thing. <laughs> They're all like, what kind of mother is this? Oh, I've had so many of those moments. You have no idea. I feel you. Ruby used to call. She couldn't talk. So she would say lipstick was dick dick. And I'd be in the store. I'd be, you know, at uh, Walgreens or something picking stuff up and she'd see lipstick and she'd go she'd point to her mouth and she'd go dick dick mommy dick dick (laughs) i was like oh my god no she didn't mean it that's not what other people be looking at me nope nope she means lipstick you mean lipstick right honey lipstick lipstick yeah she used to call the grinch the bitch yeah when they can't get all those simple Uh, no no it's funny (laughs) it is funny i'm not gonna lie what's the most uh What's the worst thing Brooke's ever done? <laughs> With your face. Wow. <laughs> the worst thing she's ever Is done. Is Brooke your favorite child? No, Lacey's the golden child. You're <laughs> all, we actually used to You're get all tr- my favorites. We actually all used my to, favorites. We actually used to get <laughs> in trouble. We get used to get in trouble. Oh, I think your later years, I'm definitely the favorite. She's not going to say it. She knows it. <laughs> and my siblings know it too. I am the favorite. Not only am I the favorite of I am mom and dad, I'm their favorite. You guys know it. Probably because I'm not home. That's probably time. true. Oh, that's probably true. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I am the favorite because we all love each other so much. And because I'm not home, when I do come home, we just we just love to love each other even more. Like, go and do stuff. Yeah. But that's the same and with the mom, grandkids. You know, they mom, all want mom Aunt comes Brooke. To, mom comes to California and we like dress her up in the 1930s I know. and take me out take her out <laughs> take her dancing. out dancing take her out dancing take her out it was a little flapper a little flapper yeah it was great but no i yeah go ahead tell some stories about me mom yeah our listeners want to know stories about her mhm she's always i loved cuz she's always been so positive i haven't really got any she never really gave me any trouble oh nice growing up she might go out and do something, but she would come home. I was the worst liar. She was the worst liar. <laughs> like the worst. She could not go to bed. She would go to bed. Guilt n- just guilt, ate at me. And she'd come in and she'd kneel down at the side of her bed or she'd climb up in bed between Trace and I. She still climbs into bed with us and that's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I do. She does. She loves to snuggle. I love and to lay by my I, mom and dad. And I... <laughs> Would not change that one bit. Oh, that's awesome. But um, she would always come in and and confess whatever she had done. (laughs) She she couldn't go to bed. And I love that. But she was always so positive. And I knew, well, she started out, um, let me go back to the beginning when I had her. Um, I actually, when she was born, they actually totally lost her and had to revive her. And... um, she was in ICU for 
24 hours to 48 hours before I ever seen her. And um, for the first eight months of her life, she would quit breathing all the time. She'd aspirate on her flu, her own oh fluids. Oh my gosh, it's so terrifying. Like feet or anything. So yeah. she had to sleep. And nowadays they have like mats that, or things like babies mm-hmm. can sleep on. So like if like something's happening, an yeah. alarm yeah. goes off, right? Yeah. My mom just had to like didn't have that then. just sat no. there and watched me sleep at night. I didn't sleep, but she I put her in an infant seat back then. Her infant seat, she slept on a 45 degree angle. They said they could give me a, they called it a crucifixion board. And I'm like, it's this wood board. That sounds with a horrible. Stick. No. <laughs> and Jeez. then they, and so I thought, well, they <laughs> let, strap them to a board that had a stick that their legs go on each side so they couldn't slide off it. And I'm like, yeah, I can't do that. No. So I had an infant seat and I just put her into the crib at the side of my bed. And then I'd wake up so many times in the night and her arms would be sticking straight in the air and I just arouse her. But everybody was kind of scared of her for the longest time. But I always knew, I don't know, something about her. Her dad will say the same thing. Something special about Brooke. You know, my kids are all special, but she's been my one that I've always known is going to go after whatever she wants Aww. and she's going to succeed. You and I'm like very, very, up. I am. I'm very, <laughs> very proud <laughs> of what she's done yeah. and accomplished. Oh, sorry, but I love you. <laughs> but so when she sweet. was, um, you know, she danced, she's very, I'm a mom that, um, my kids want to be involved in something. I would work whatever I had to work to put them in it. But if they ever came and said, and I don't want to go today. That didn't wash with me. No, you were out. <laughs> you were out. You signed up, you finish it. You give it 110%. And next year, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. Mm-hmm. And I'm the same right now with my grandkids. Um, I will put them in anything they want to do and support them in whatever they do, but they have to commit. And then I'll back them 100%. But she, from the time she was really little, thought she was going to sing I, did. I was going to be on Broadway. She has a great singing voice. She has a great voice. Yeah. I and I, be, to this day, love her to sing mm-hmm. to me in the car. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when we drive, she sings for me. I uh, was, <laughs> well, I remember vividly one year for, you know, like birthday cards, the ones they have that when you open them, they sing a song. Uh-huh. So I remember, I was older, <laughs> my dad got me a birthday card that when it opened up, it said, I want it all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. want it all. Yes. And it's because <laughs> when I was growing up, I was just... I thought I was just going to do everything. Really? It's and my parents would be like, you can't do everything. And I was like, yes, I can. <laughs> 100%. I was like, I wanted, I wanted to dance on Broadway. I, did, I was in dance classes. I was on the swim team. I did gymnastics. I wanted to do barrel racing. Never got to do that. Um, and then as I got older, I just, with, you know, you're in school all day too. And then you start working. It's certain things you don't have time for. And, and it's like. <laughs> you couldn't do it all. Couldn't you, do it all. You find out you, you have to pick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when it came down, she was playing high school softball and You're dancing. Good. And she danced every seriously day. every night of the week from the time she got out of school till we I pick her up at nine thirty at night to take her home and and so it was like she had her dad made it very clear she had to keep grades at a, a level or she could not dance. And she just was so determined and she worked so hard at it that her grades, she never had a problem with her grades, but she worked hard to keep them all up and, and she's just very dedicated, a hard worker and goes after it. And her whole life I've always, there's something special about her and what you see and what she says is 100%. She doesn't make anything up. She tells it how it is. And I love that about her and I've instilled that in her. You get nowhere from lying or turning things around because it comes back to bite you in the ass eventually. Mm-hmm. And so if you're just up front in the very beginning and you know that, that's all that matters. Well, I mean, I've learned that I, whenever I do try to not be up front, I always have to tell the truth because it just- Eats <laughs> you up. Dude, I was so bad at lying or fibbing or even just- I mean, like, that's a good thing. Or like keeping a secret. Right. Like no one was even allowed to tell me like my siblings, no one would tell me secrets about if it was like a birthday thing or a surprise thing. No one told me because I was just like the, like you. <laughs> like me. Yeah. Literally like you. you right. It's on your face. Okay. This is actually really, this will tell you, this is high school. I couldn't even tell a lie to my teacher in high school. She couldn't. She couldn't. I was in English class. Uh, Miss Gardner, if you're listening to this, I remember you and you were my favorite English teacher. So uh, got to class, had to turn in our papers. I just told her, 
my printer was broken. <laughs> it was not. I just didn't finish it. And she goes, all right, no problem. Bring it tomorrow. And I was like, whew. And then I sat in class and I was just like. Stewing. Oh, that does not sit well with me. <laughs> That's how she is. She can't. <laughs> Seriously, we're just like in class working on our art project, whatever we were doing. And I was just like, oh, man. Miss Garner, can I, can, she's in her office. And I was like, can I talk to you for a minute? She's like, <laughs> this yeah. This is so true. This is serious. This is like nine, uh, it's, uh, 10th grade. 10th grade. Probably mm-hmm. 10th grade. <laughs> <laughs> what a whip. <laughs> I go in her office and I shut the door and I was like, my printer wasn't broken. I just didn't finish my paper. And she looks at me and she laughs and she goes, Brooke. Just bring it to me tomorrow. And I was like, okay. Okay, okay thank you. <laughs> thank you. Went back to my seat. I was like, just I just felt, okay, even better. Okay, uh, middle school. I didn't get my report card signed. So one of the bad kids in class, I was like, hey, will you, will you forge this signature for me? <laughs> no, wait, no, no, wrong, sorry. I forged my mom's signature. You, I can forge hers. I never could do my dad's, never. Uh, so I signed it, I turned it in. I felt so bad, so guilty that I found one of the bad kids in class and I convinced him to steal it back from the teacher. <laughs> and I just didn't turn it in. No. That's 100%, true. 100%, that's true. That was in shop class. Oh, <laughs> shop. you did sign for shop? Dude, I just, oh, man, over the dumbest stuff. I mean, that's not a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good thing. You have integrity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a tough load to bear sometimes. Dude, when I was growing up though, I th- I just hated it cuz it was like my siblings were like, "We're not telling you anything." And I was like, "I won't tell anyone, I promise." They told me nothing, and every time they did tell me, it was like all the one person, cousin or mom or dad, all they do is ask one question. It was like <laughs> They're their friends house, they weren't supposed to go, but they're over there. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> They told me not to tell, but I, but I can't, but I can't lie to you, Dad. <laughs> yep, so true. How's your anxiety level been lately? High. <laughs> me too. <laughs> For many reasons, you know, and a lot of them. California like, is on fire. Yeah, out yeah. of your control. Uh, things that are out of your control. Things are out of your control, and and then some things that are in your control, but maybe like the time frame is out of your control. Right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Right. If you guys are at home, spending a lot of time at home. And like us, like most of fires us. are everywhere. So Gina was out of her home for a while. <laughs> it was evacuated. You're probably struggling with, you know, your mood or stress and all of these things that can be very difficult to handle on your own. And if you're like me, you naturally keep it inside and try to fix it on your own. Internalize then, it. Then reaching out for any sort of help. But better help is a really great format that you, I recommend you looking into. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. They have licensed professional counselors who are specialized in depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, sleeping, trauma, anger, family conflicts, LGBT matters, grief, and self-esteem. And anything you share is confidential. It's convenient, professional, and affordable, which is really important. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. So now you have even more of an option. You know, if one counselor's not really working well with you, you want to try, someone, just try someone different. Them out. Yeah, it's a very easy and format can, to and move through, figure out. Yeah, and you can get a hold of them really easily. Much more convenient than going to an office. Oh, yeah. We want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash reps. Join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health. Again, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash reps. I know that not everyone are wine enthusiasts, but we are. We are. (laughs) You actually really turned me into one. I know. (laughs) I'm sorry. No, I I love it though. I really do. And I really enjoy trying different wine and I really love convenient wine. You know, well, there's nothing more convenient than having it just delivered to your door, delivered to your door, already measured out. Yeah, (laughs) it's already measured out. And that's a good thing, because on one hand, you may not drink too much (laughs) or just open another one. Way easier to share with friends. It's a healthy pour. We're talking about usual wines. Yes. And we have tried every single one. Yes. And have liked every single one. 
It's a new obsession. It the is. The biggest obsession for us, though, was the spritz, the spritz. that they have. Oh, it has so real right now guava they, juice yeah, in it. Yeah, right now they have a spritz with guava juice. But more than that, they have reds. They have a rosé. Um, they have a brute rosé. A white. And they come in a 6.3 ounce adorable glass bottle. It is. You could almost put little flowers in it when you were done. Yeah. And I immediately think like, I want to have a party and just put, you know, <laughs> one of these every, at every per, table. Every person gets every a table every table. The wines are low carb and have zero grams of sugar. Yes, they contain sugar. But to clarify, all usual wines are produced using natural, sustainable grapes harvested every fall. And the grapes are picked at optimal ripeness to ensure all sugars will be fermented completely until the wines are dry with no residual sugar. And they are great. If you love wine and you love to entertain, you have to try Usual Wines. Go check out their website at www.usualwines.com and use our discount code REPS for $8 off your first order and try your first glass on us. Cheers. I believe in reading labels. I believe reading labels is key when buying anything. I do it with everything from the food I buy to the beauty products I use, even my deodorant from Native. My Native deodorant doesn't just block odor better, it's made better. Native has ingredients you've heard of like coconut oil, shea butter, and tapioca starch. I know that last one was weird to me the first time I read it too, but not after I used Native and realized it gets the job done. It works. Yeah. It's also vegan and never tested on animals. And switching to an aluminum-free deodorant doesn't mean you have to sacrifice on odor protection. Native will keep you smelling and feeling fresh all day long. Oh, yeah. And they have over 10 scents, including rotating seasonal scents. I'm still sticking with my favorite. Which one? Coconut and vanilla. That's my favorite. I know. That's why I'm never upset if I forget my deodorant, because I know that you wear the same (laughs) same flavor. (laughs) Although I do want to try the citrus and herbal. That one sounds like it smells good. That's what I'm ordering next. Do what we did and make the switch to Native today by going to nativedeo.com slash reps or use promo code reps at checkout and get 20% off your first order. That's nativedeo.com slash reps or use promo code reps at checkout for 20% off your first order. Uh. Dude, the one time I lied to my dad, the one time I was like hanging on strong, this was a, this is a planned lie. High school. Do you remember this? When I was supposed to sleep at Kelsey's house? Yeah. I've told you this. Planned lie. My best friend. Um, her parents were out of town. And they were out of town a lot. So, like, they, I mean, I'm the youngest of four. My oldest two siblings, thank you guys, got into a lot of trouble. So, by the time my mom had, like, me and Lacey, mostly me, because uh, Lacey was more of a homebody. Mm-hmm. But it was, like, the the rules that were put on me were really because they were more lenient with the older two, but they really ruined that for the rest of us. <laughs> so I was going to so kill his parents out of town. And it was, a, I think it was a school night maybe, or it was just the weekend. And I told my dad, like we knew that we were going to be out late. 100%. Mm-hmm. Like maybe all night, you know? Um, but the plan was my, cause I had a curfew and I told my dad, I was like, he called me. He's like, you coming home? And I was like, yes, I'm on my way. So I drive home. But the whole plan was, is I, and I told him, and Kelsey lived at my house. Like, we were inseparable. So the lie w- was very believable, except I still couldn't deliver it correctly. Um, I, was go- I told him, you know, Kelsey's home alone. She's going to call me if she's really nervous, and I'm going to go stay with her. Mm-hmm. And he was like, whatever, okay. So it's like I'm in my room. And Kelsey calls. She's at a friend's house. And she goes, hey, uh, I'm really scared. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can you come and stay? And I was like, yeah, okay. I'm going to go tell mom and dad. So I go in and I was like, hey, dad, Kelsey just called. I'm going to go stay. And all he did was this. He says, you're not going to Kelsey's house. You're going to, you're, you're going to go to your friend's house. And I was like, <laughs> how did you know? And it's like, it's, I didn't even, I, it's like, I didn't even get to finish the lie. Like all it took was him just making an assumption like I could have, I could have really held strong to him and been like, no, you know, and like, and, and played it out. But all he did was he just said that. And I was like, well, I was, I would stay at Kelsey's boat. And then he would just, and all, this is the worst thing that my dad has ever said to me. The worst 
oh, he said, I am so disappointed in you. And I was just like, oh, <laughs> <I know. laughs> oh my God, I kill know. me, yeah. end it. And he let, he made it very clear that it would take a long time for me to regain his trust again. Oof. And it did. And that, from that evening, he cre- he now made my curfew, I think, for like my junior year of high school with some exceptions due to like football games or whatever. But like, I think it was like a, like 11 o'clock or earlier. <laughs> right. Yeah. It sucked. But you know, that's what happens. That's what happens <laughs> when you mess with the bull, you get the horns. That's right. Oh yeah. He's, he's pretty right up front with how he feels on things, which is good. It- <laughs> But yeah, you couldn't, yeah. he couldn't love you anymore. No. How about, how about the other day when you told me, it was after me and dad got into an emotional, well, it was just like a, we were talking about some stuff on the phone. And I basically told him, I was like, I basically told him because he was pissing me off. I said, I'm not coming home if this is, if you're doing this right now. Anyways, Talk to my mom the next day. And what did you say to him? You told him how, how did it feel to talk to yourself? I did. <laughs> I did. I did say that to him because I said, he is like the two of them. I'm listening to the two of them. And I'm like going, he, they got off the phone and I just looked at him. And I said, how did that feel? And he's looking at me. And I said, talking to yourself right there. <laughs> That's the closest one out of our kids that she will stand up just like you. Stand up and state her mind back at you mm-hmm. because, you know, her, her thoughts, she's strong on just like you and you guys seriously cutting each other off. <laughs> just let me stop. Just, just shut up and let me speak. And I'm like, I'm just sitting there and like, and Trace is like telling her to shut up and let him <laughs> speak. And I'm like, you guys are like the same person, the same. They were which like is, talking, which is so funny. Cause I feel like you two are the same person. Okay. But here's the thing. So my whole upbringing. Okay. I not only heard this like from my mom, like making a joke, but like from like family of that the concoction that my mom and dad made when they made me, Cody, Robin, and Lacey Mm -hmm. was a very toxic. No, no, no. (laughs) Not not toxic. (laughs) Toxic. It was just like a very uh, dangerous one. (laughs) I, I've always, I've always said between my bloodline and Trace's bloodline. My poor kids didn't stand a chance. <laughs> Straight I'm the up, one. Dude. I'm the one that said that because, and then just so happens that her and I are both Leos. Mm-hmm. And it and it's like so. The fireballs. Yeah, mm-hmm. very both of us like that. If I'm I set my mind to something, it's like I don't care how bad I hurt or if I'm broken. If someone says, "Oh, you can't do that," I'm like, "Oh, oh yes, I can." The last thing you want to tell me is that I can't. Dude. Right. So my mom, uh, she, well, she, both my parents are business owners or did. My dad just retired. My mom started and ran and owned the best bagel bagel shop in Southern Utah uh, amongst many other things that she did. Catered weddings, wedding cakes, pies for, she made pies for restaurants, um, the list goes on. She's if it, she's done it. Okay, um, we were doing the athlete retreat for naked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, this was great. My mom made me look at the biggest pussy. <laughs> we <laughs> right, and I was like, "Get it, mom! I want everyone here to know who the head bitch is in on this retreat." <laughs> we are climbing Angels Landing. Mm-hmm. So in anyone Zion. listening, if you've been to Zion, you definitely know Angels Landing. Um, it is a very, I should Google it and just give you the exact distance and everything, but it is the longest hike and it just gets gnarly steep. Are you going to Google it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and we start out, you know, and like Hutton, Hutton's super competitive, Jacob. And we all start out, you know, and we're hoofing it. So no one's like really running, but we're like, we're, you're a very fast paced, uh, walk because we want, we're wanting the exercise. Plus we really needed to get to the very top and not everyone was going to go to the very top. Cause there's a point where it gets super sketchy and we didn't want anyone doing it. that didn't feel comfortable, but 
we wanted to get up there and get down before, you know, it got dark and it actually started raining while we were up there, it which was poured. very dangerous. Yeah. But my mom starts going and she's passing everybody, <laughs> everyone in the group. Does not surprise I'm me. not kidding you. And as she's going by, she's calling, she's saying shit to me. She's like, <laughs> what'd she say to me? She passes me and she looks back and she goes, chop, chop. And, <laughs> and, and smacks her hands. And I was like, mom, what the fuck? <laughs> But it was, it's epic. Unhook the trailer. Yeah, it's epic. <laughs> Unhook the trailer. Because it's like, she's, Let it go. she knows what she wants and she goes after and she's just like getting her workout in. <laughs> well, yeah, because I'm like, I'm in there to do it. And I like head down and just go till you're done. Like that climb, it is a climb. And I feel like I'm going to do it. I'm going to get the most out of I can. So I have to just head down. I'm in my own world and I just, I hit a pace that I know I can hold and I just hold it. Yeah. My mom's 61, by the way. She just turned 61. Um, and it's so funny because, I mean, like, Gina's 50. And, like, in our group of, like, in our group, or you kind of get into, like, your own little world of things. Mm -hmm. Like, the age thing, it, like, really is, it just doesn't matter. No. no. You know, and like my mom, you said like, you know, a friend of yours, you just, you start to recognize when certain people, it's like they could even be younger than you. But the second you decide to like give that in. I'm old. You decide right. to like give in and be like, I'm old now. I don't do that anymore. Dude, you don't have to do that. Like you yeah. really don't. My mom's 61, just crushing, crushing it in it. the gym, you know, it, you know, gets more compliments then Gina and I combined when I'm out, <laughs> when I'm out and about with her. I did love the fact that somebody thought I was your sister. Yeah. And then he like kept, he like kept commenting about you as we're trying to leave the liquor store. Girl, yeah. shut <laughs> <out. laughs> I'm like, come on, geez. Uh, do you want to know how long it was? Yeah. Two and a half miles long with an approximate 1500 foot, uh, feet of elevation gain. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, it's that's a lot. It's a lot and it's steep. And then you get to the, before you go, then you have to go on chains where you actually hold the chain. Yeah. There's like, cha oh, like there's, yeah, it's sketchy. It's, it's sketchy. And it's like, I didn't climb that. No, I didn't let her. We got to the point where it was like the last people moment have fallen off where there. you could turn around. Like people have died. Off and it's that. always like eh, idiots that think that, you it. know, that they think, I mean, I saw people up there hiking in like those really trendy, like, big old Adidas tennis shoes or like. Like not hiking shoes? No. Not what they should be hiking yeah. in. And it's pouring rain. Man, well, when we, it poured okay, down. Okay, well yeah. she turned around and went down. There was a group of people that went down, but the rest of us went up. We get up there and you know, the, the storm clouds are kind of coming in and we're taking pictures. So it's like me and Brennan, Leticia, Jake, Sunny, and the, some of the group, we're getting all photos up there. Eric from. Oh yeah, uh, Imam. Yeah, mm -hmm. Eric came out and did photos and it starts sprinkling and we're like, we got to get down. Cause it gets slick. Yeah. yeah. And it was so bad, the rain and hail coming in that there was a few moments because you can only, if people are in front of you, there's only one way down. Like you have to right. wait for them to get down. Right. Um, we had to like sit and huddle behind like bushes trying to like stay dry. I was, we were soaking wet. But we finally did get down all, all, all safely. The craziest part is as we're trying to get down safely, they're still idiots trying to pass us to go up. We're like, what are you doing? <laughs> Turn and, around. And it happens to be the idiots that are wearing, you know, uh, trendy. They're the ones that, that are going to have to get rescued, basically. Yes. Yeah. And this, I know. if you've never been to Zion's, Zion's is when it rains there, it it's like waterfalls. waterfalls. Like it pours oh, wow. there. So as you're been. coming down this trail, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But you're coming off this trail and you actually have waterfalls yeah. that are going over the top of the trail and you're yep. having to go under them. Underwater. Be, to get through them because under, like, the water, water is oh, wow. coming down so yeah. hard and so fast. And I was down at the bottom waiting. I was a nervous wreck because yeah, I we knew they were on top. didn't have phones and stuff. So she's down there just like waiting for us to come down. But we had to like- pouring. Everybody else took the bus and I told, oh, Sunny came down with me, uh -huh. Jake's wife. And um, she went with a bunch of them um, down on the bus back and I stayed waiting for you guys to come down. And I was like a little nervous because it, I know what that trail can be when it rains like that. And it was just raining so hard, but you guys got off. Yeah. We got, once we got down from where like the chains were at, we all decided we were just going to run down 
Yeah. Which we did. We just ran. Mostly we fell. I was, was going like to say, I would have been rolling. It was it, more like a. <laughs> it's It gets really slick. I mean, yeah. yeah. You've got, you come off some of those turns and it's, that rock gets really slipped that you have to come down. You, it, yeah, it's if wet you, and it's slippery. If anyone listening to this, if you have not been to Zion National Park and you enjoy, you know, the wonders of the world and the, the natural, um, just being outdoors, it is incredible. Also Bryce Canyon. And Bryce Canyon. We have Bryce, Bryce Canyon. Canyon's right there. Yeah, it's right there too. It's there. Beautiful por- parks out there, porks. You know, I'm beautiful there. porks. There are too. Porks. beautiful porks. <laughs> lots of lots Don't of beautiful ask me porks. Haul a rope out for you. <laughs> well, <laughs> jump the rope. <laughs> yeah, dude, I have another funny story. Well, besides the jump the rope, my mom calls a jump rope. Jump the rope. <laughs> okay, it just comes out that way. My kids love. Well, I remember the first time you did it. <laughs> we were up at the. I had a competition. And me and Lacey were in the car, and oh, she gets I, the I needed to get a it. jump rope for the competition. My mom's like, "We got to get you a jump the rope." And me and Lacey are like, "What was that?" <laughs> she goes, "We need to go pick you up a jump the rope." And me and Lacey are like, "Wait, what is it called?" And yeah, she's, just keep and having her say it. It took her a second to like realize what we were doing, and we were dying. They did <laughs> laughing. That's the big new joke with me. Have you always called something. it jump the rope? Yeah, I I like think since I you were a kid, probably. Jump I just d- probably don't even realize it that I say it that yeah. way, but I do. Jump the rope. Yeah, jump yeah the but rope. now I have a complex. So so now you have to think I, about I, it? I think about it. Yeah. Because the kids have really given me a complex before <laughs> I really didn't think too much about it and it just right. came out. <laughs> I'll get you a new jump the rope. <laughs> it's the least we could do. <laughs> yeah. No, but what I was going to tell a funny story. Um, there's no real reason why I'm this came to mind, but... Uh, Actually, no, I was watching Yellowstone, you guys, epic show. Oh, oh my gosh. I told you. It makes I me... haven't gotten into it. Oh, man. I just watched the one with you. I liked it. Yeah. yeah. You might get into it because uh, it is just a really good show, but I'm so into it because I just it's come like from nostalgic, such, right? It's super like nostalgic for yeah. my, just my home. Yeah. Um, but there was a moment where one of the guys basically cracks a whip and it like, goes around one of the guys next. Oh, are you talking about when I cracked yeah. the whip? So, we, <laughs> so me and my mom and my dad, we were at, um, where, oh, where were we? Ranch. We were at Cal Ranch. Great store, by the way. And we're walking around <laughs> and we love Cal Ranch. And my mom gets a freaking cattle whip. <laughs> Gee, that's a big one. Okay. And she just, I'm like, and I'm like, oh, and I start running from her. And she just goes, tink. And it, I kid you not, she just one tiny whip of the wrist because she thought to herself like, oh, I'm just a joke. It's a joke. I'm not going to get you. <laughs> that whip fully wrapped around my thigh. <laughs> I was wearing shorts. How and old are you? Dude, I was probably like, I don't know, like probably like 16. Probably 17. <laughs> yeah, I'm like laughing, trying to balling. She literally, <laughs> she was like, she goes, oh, Brooke, watch out. No, she, you know, she's like, I hit. and I was like, mom, what the fuck? And I start, <laughs> I start like running away from her and she just goes, tink. And it just goes whoosh, all the way, drops me to the my ground. Mic, my <gasps> mic died. No, it's mom, not. no, your headphones are just unplugged. Well, I didn't unplug. Well, you like must have pulled did. it with your leg. Probably. You were getting so excited. <laughs> so drops me to the ground. And I'm just like, oh, <laughs> my mom feels a terrible. I look down. I was this close. Like, I was so close to having blood come through my skin. No. Because yeah. I had a raised yeah, whip did. mark, perfect <laughs> circle around my thigh, raised up, and it was just so red and, like, kind of where, uh, yeah, it about cut me open. <laughs> <laughs> And it was hilarious. Like we were we laughing, laughing about it. so hard. Yeah. Like, we were laughing. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I had like, no idea. Oh, that was so she funny. Was, I didn't mean to do that. Yeah. I was like, but she it wasn't dropped. On purpose. Dude, she dropped me so quick. <laughs> yeah, I'll never forget it. Yeah, it was great. And we laughed it really hard because we laughed not, so hard. She really didn't like the intention wasn't to get, get me. me. No, but that whip is so long, and all it took was just tink, and it just. Whoo, it was it the crack did its on the job, end, man. The crack on the end of that whip did its job all it's the way like around. An Indiana my thigh. Jones over there. It yep. Was, well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it was nice to know it really worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. She was like, "Yeah, don't you forget it. Tell your friends." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'll I could, you. I could keep you in shape. Tell you a story. Okay. Okay. I think it was. Um, I only had Robin and Cody at the time. 
but it's kind of like that. And I was in the kitchen and I was cooking and your dad came in and he was bugging me <laughs> and I just swung my hand back and he drops. <gasps> Where'd you swing it to, Mom? Well, I didn't mean to hit it there, but he went. I don't know what you're talking about, Mom. Right He's... in the nuts. Right in his nuts. <laughs> okay, come back. And my son's eyes got so big, and I said, see, your mom can handle it with just one swing. I can handle your dad. <laughs> don't ever think anything different. <laughs> just drop dad <laughs> to the floor. He's just curled up on the floor, and I'm like, I'm so sorry. But that I'm sorry. That's problem. not what I meant to. I'm sorry, but sorry, I'm using to do it. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it, but I'm learning this. I'm, I'm using this as a learning <laughs> Tool. tool yeah oh my gosh At don't you cost. forget it kids uh, don't you forget it oh my gosh yeah no you guys are a lot alike a lot alike yeah, yeah. and i was telling her what they're the both DJ. nudists <laughs> i'm i will not deny that i know they're both nudists guys everyone's like dang can i hang out with them <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it is. Brooke's always been a very uh, free person. And you know what? It comes it's from, that, it could come from like my mom. It's from your mom. But like when I was young, I ran around naked all the time. I ran around naked when I was a kid, but there was a point where I just didn't anymore. For you me. You continued to run around but naked. But here's, here's why I've I have been like that with all you, my kids, even my son. But that's why. Think, but here's, why, but here's I why I she think is. so. Uh, I think more so than just like when I would like run through the house without any clothes on to like I'd run to like my mom's bedroom or to like the laundry room to get my stuff. I wouldn't just like be naked around my house. Right. No, like when I was little, I always, like when I was really little, I remember just like wanting to be like my dad and him and my brother would be outside doing yard work and they had their shirts off. So I'd go out there with my shirt off too. Like that was just <laughs> the, what I did. Yep. But I would say the comfort of just like not really having clothes on all the time. I mean, I danced uh, from age four until I went to college and then I danced in college. But like, I just was so used to like leotard and tights. Um, you don't when like you're, the restriction <clears throat> of clothing. Yeah. yeah. And then like also too, when we would be performing quick changes, you strip down on the side of the stage, you strip down. It's like, it's just, it's just the way that it is. Right. It's Tina, not like you a, can't tell me what that you can't hardly wait to get home and get out of your clothes. I, oh, so I sleep naked a lot of the time. Yeah. See, and I don't. But, well, I obviously, if, if you're sleeping with me, I'm not sleeping naked. I do. But. <laughs> <laughs> I wait till you're asleep. <laughs> but I do like sleeping naked. I have to wear underwear. That's it. Uh, sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. I, I just don't want. But I, I mean, I definitely support. will go home and change my clothes into something more comfortable. I like to be comfortable, but I won't necessarily walk around naked. I've been caught in my old house, <laughs> I had windows all across the back and I don't, I don't put blinds or anything on uh -huh. them and my house kind of sat well, down. Well, because there wasn't like a house right, right behind, behind us. me. Right. It was actually above so us and it had a fence. See, and so you couldn't I, see in the house. But we were putting a pool in and I would go across the back of my house and I had a room that was like my craft room and I'd iron or whatever in there, my sewing room. Ironing, iron, ironing. Iron, ironing naked does not sound like a good thing. I, I go was in just there. going in there for something. No, I know. I'd be kidding. going in there and then all of a sudden I hear somebody in the backyard and so I have really low windows and literally the, like the you had crawl. Like a, a foot and a half of <laughs> the crawl <laughs> slithering like the snake army under crawl. the window. I wish I could have seen that. Just army crawling naked. I mean, definitely when we, were putting, so when we were putting the pool in, I was in middle school. And my dad would come in to kiss me goodbye when he's going to work. And what he said is he would come in and say, hey, wear some clothes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's guy, workers. There's workers in the backyard. <laughs> yeah. He still tells okay. me that. Uh, I have to tell Ruby that all the time. Put on clothes. She's, like a, she's a naked one too. No, but it's funny because, so Brooke's always been very, uh, very comfortable being naked. I'm not uncomfortable being naked. I'll be naked. No, yeah, you're naked. Yeah, I'm naked. Uh, yeah. yeah, but it was just I'm so naked. funny because the first the first time I realized I was like, oh, this is where she gets it. Is I was down. <laughs> I flew down <laughs> to pick you up. You'd had surgery, uh -huh. and your mom was with you, and I was going to drive you guys back up. And, uh, and I'd, I'd met room. you. Yeah, I'd met you, and we'd hung out a couple times, but. Leslie comes out of the shower, just towel on her head, completely naked, just talking to me. 
Yeah, and so <laughs> just bending, bending over, getting into her suitcase. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> just, and Judah's yeah. like, okay, okay, okay. All right. I mean, it doesn't make me uncomfortable. I just was like, yeah, good for her. I see where she gets it. <laughs> okay. No shame in her game. And that is, and we've noted it. <laughs> yeah. No, I love it. I was sitting in the car with you guys the other day, listening to you talk, and it's, it's literally the same person. That's why I think it's so funny that you're the same person as your dad, too. <laughs> terrifying. I know. It is terrifying. No. Her, yeah. You guys are good people. I'm just so thankful that you had her so she could be Me my friend. Too. Me, too, man. I'm yeah. so happy you and dad did it. <laughs> oh, you guys did it only four times, right? Oh, the killer is. I'm yeah. so happy after the first three, you still thought, like, let's... Let's, Let's do it again. One, one more. <laughs> yeah. One more go Let's around. Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, what were you and I say? will never forget the day. I can't even remember how old you were. Lacey and I was going, I was going to go get me a sexy nighty. Uh-huh. And you like, <gasps> tells Lacey, no, you're not. They don't do that anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, guys. All right. You um, remember? I 100%. Uh, I was pretty young because Robin ruined me. My oldest sister ruined me. I knew ever, I knew everything. I knew not everything about sex, but I had like the sex talk well before Lacey did. Who's older than me. Cause Robin thought it was hilarious. She would just like tell <laughs> stuff to me. Uh, and then when I'd go to school, I would tell my friends, <clears throat> but I do remember that when I found out that my parents apparently still had sex, I was like, what? Ew. I was like, no, I thought when I was little, I thought the only reason, the only reason you had sex was to make a baby. And if you weren't making a baby, you didn't have sex. And so, yeah, I remember, well, honestly, I remember the first time I heard you and dad having sex. Let's not go there. I was probably (laughs) really young, but it was because like you said, like when you're little and I had nightmares. So I had really bad, I had nightmares when I was little and I would end up in my parents' room or I would be so terrified sometimes. uh, I couldn't even get out of my bed to go to their room. I would have to yell for them to come to my room. (laughs) True. To do that. And so of course I would have ran into the moment where I, you know, I'm going to go to their room and their door's shut. And if my parents, that was the, that was the first mistake, mom. You guys always slept with your door open. And if you were fucking, you shut it. It's like, if your door was shut, I knew. And I then still remember like, the time your dad put Vaseline on the doorknob. Well, I probably wasn't alive, was I? Probably. That's how my dad tried to keep Oh, yeah, you were out. telling me yeah. this story. Yeah, <laughs> he'd put Vaseline on the doorknob so the kids couldn't turn the doorknob. Because they'd come, my siblings Regardless. would come to the room and just be knocking on the door, Mom! <laughs> Mom! Uh, the worst. The worst. It's so funny. Your phone keeps going off and it's on vibrate. Oh, and do I you keep like thinking it? that you farting. Oh, <laughs> I, I felt it earlier and it was like, oh, oh well, okay. there's a handful of people. Okay. All right. Well, you guys, we've come down to the to end, the end right of our to hundred home. episode. Guys, what if and we, we did read all the emails, so I didn't get to all of them because I didn't want to read all of them out loud, but there were some really great ideas and we might actually still go back and at least do some of them for another episode. We're like, ah, oh, we're trying to get content. So honestly, <laughs> what oh are we going to do? Honestly, we're so surprised that we did a, a hundred. Of I these. know. I'm impressed. I know. Really. Thanks. I am. Thank you. And proud of you both. Thank you. We'll definitely read your emails and use them because what else are we going to talk about? I know. That's what I remember Brooke was like, maybe we'll do like Enneagrams because we do want to do that. Yes, we do no. want to talk about them. You know, Natalie keeps asking me, did you do it? I'm like, no, I forgot. I know. So we were going to do that. And my sister's been telling us to do it forever too. And then she said, well, maybe when my mom comes on, like all three of us will do it. And I said, no, we need another, like something else to talk about on a different episode. At least let's, you know, separate yeah, them. So we're going to do Enneagrams. Yeah. And, and then we'll, we'll talk about our, tell you guys what we are, our letter, our number, sequence, number, our number, numbers. I think there's so many different, dude, there's, there's numbers. There's yeah, so many different numbers. like personality things. I know. All right. Well, thank you so much, Leslie, for being on. Yeah. You're welcome. Brooks, mom's buff. Brooks, mom's, Brooks, buff. mom's buff. Brooks, mom's buff. Brooks, hey. mom's buff. And, yeah. And you know what? This is really funny too. I'm just going to end with this. It was really funny because Leslie, obviously, uh, 
is a very protective mom and it's probably really hard for you to hear the things that people say about your daughter, sometimes the negative things. And it was so funny because we were doing we were one just of, working out. Yeah, we were working out and <clears throat> Colby was filming and it gets to Leslie and she goes, What'd you say? Always oh, he said, she said, and I don't do and steroids. I don't do steroids. <laughs> yes. I did say that. Because if you see Leslie, it's hard to say. I mean, she's all dressed up. But but if you see her work out, she and Brooke have the, I mean, Brooke has her jeans. 100%. We're going to see how many times we can say 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. Oh, okay. And yeah. last thing, you guys, answer.com. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're starting to get now that like, you know, some things are opening back up. I had new partners and then COVID happened and it got super crazy, but I'm going to be coming out with some more, like some graphic tees and obviously active wear and we have men's stuff coming out, but I, we're going to be working on for sure. I think it'll live at answer.com, but we're going to, hi, we're going to be doing some BTR. Yeah. We're going to do some merch, some between the reps merch. And one shirt for sure is going to be. Huh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, one's going to be hundred, 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 hundred percent, and prove for sure, it, and prove it, prove it, and yeah, we're not sure how to how to write that. So, if you guys have any ideas of how to actually spell that, it would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe you're going to get that. Just I don't like, know. You're going to have to get like- I was thinking like B-L-L-P, the, like- bl- And then you got to have the little graphic like it's- Dude, maybe, yeah. we yeah. Should, maybe we should also sell some of those ice cube shapers. Oh, no. oh yeah. <laughs> that I donated to you guys. Oh, yeah. My mom's here. As soon as she got here, I was like, hey, mom, I pulled it out of the freezer and I was like, I put this on the podcast the other day. <laughs> she goes, I forgot you had that. I've been over here ba- making dicks. Yeah, I was yeah. just showing everyone my dick. <laughs> I used to make them into popsicles. <laughs> That's what I said. I said yeah. you could make it into a popsicle. Yeah, you just have to I start know. ahead of time and then you have a girls' night or whatever. We'd always float them in the punch bowl. I know. That's at a gathering amazing. and shock people. <laughs> Does it sound like something I would do? Uh huh. Yep. Yep. All right, guys. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for listening. Yes, thank you for listening. Uh, thank you, Mom, for chatting. Thank you again for writing in. And yeah. Remember to rate, review, subscribe, five, five star, star rating, five star, star warning, warning, and we'll talk to you guys we'll next, talk week. To you next week. Bye. Bye.